The federal government has ordered 21 million doses of swine flu vaccine and plans to vaccinate as many Australians as possible as soon as possible. But infectious disease experts are concerned about the risk of contamination. Is the government acting too hastily? Is there an alternative? We're joined today by Dr Isaac Golden, a recognised world leader in homeopathy, who says there's a safe homeopathic option. And in our Adelaide studio, Professor Nikolai Petrovsky, who's a research director of Vaccine, a company that's trialling its own swine flu vaccine. Gentlemen, good morning. Thanks good morning. For good morning, David and Kim. Nikolai, can, and we, Nikolai. Start, can we start with you, please? Uh, as we said, leading infectious disease experts are concerned that the use of multi-dose vials could uh, transmit disease. Are they correct in saying that? Well, when we're administering a vaccine to, to healthy individuals, obviously safety is paramount. So even if the risk um, of transmitting infection using a multi-dose vial is very low, um, we would argue any risk is, is too much risk. So as I say, we're not saying that this is a high risk, but, but certainly it is a risk. All right, I'd like to talk to you about the effectiveness of, of a swine flu vaccine. How, how does it actually work when it's a virus? So, so the idea here is that a, a vaccine uh, mimics the virus. It, it actually isn't a live virus. It's either a killed virus or, uh, in our case, with our vaccine, it's, it's actually just one component from the virus. Uh, in, in that case, it, it triggers the immune system to recognise the virus so that when you do get exposed to the live virus, your immune system's already primed to be able to attack and kill it but so, before it, it really establishes. So what happens if it, if it mutates as, as people are, are suggesting that it is? Well, the, 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 the concern, of, of course, is that in the 1918 Spanish influenza, which is the worst uh, uh, flu epidemic that we've experienced. Uh, during the first winter season, in fact, the infection was a bit like we're seeing with the swine flu virus. Uh, you know, most people got over it, and, uh, but there were a few deaths. But then the second winter season, when it came back in a new form, uh, that's when it was highly lethal and about 50 million people died with that infection. Well, Isaac, so, so the risk of mutation is there. Mm. OK. Isaac, given the concerns that have been expressed... Is the government being hasty, do you think, in, in rolling this out already? I mean, should we be looking for alternatives? Unfortunately, the government's advisers don't look at the alternatives that are available. And I know that Dr Petrosky and I will probably disagree about efficacy because there's no disagreement about safety, whilst he is uh, making very good efforts to develop a safer vaccine. Uh, you can be even safer still. Now... The reason why the Cuban government in 2007 turned the Finlay Institute, which makes vaccines there, into manufacturing two and a half million doses of homeopathic immunisation for the disease leptospirosis is exactly the point that Dr Petrovsky just covered. And that is that as the diseases mutate, one of the problems with vaccination is that it, there's a very long lead time to actually accommodate that. The one advantage with the homeopathic option is that because it works on different principles, it's not an attempt to mimic vaccination, the, the remedies which are prepared, provided the symptom profile of the disease doesn't change greatly, can still be used. It, well, I'm wondering whether perhaps... Part of the attraction of, of a swine flu vaccine is that you can go in and get a jab and it works for everyone. Is, is it possible Nothing to... works for everyone. Well, <laughs> Nothing well, on the planet works for everyone, Well, is, is it possible to have a, a homeopathic remedy mass-produced in that sense? That will... Well, as I said, the, the Cubans actually immunised three provinces uh, which were most at risk because of the massive hurricane damage in 2007 and again in 2008. They immunised over two million people, two million people, and they did it in about two or three weeks. And the cost, this is the other factor which we need to consider, the cost was about 400,000 American dollars. Now, when you look at the costs of the vaccines which are being brought on here, our government could literally save hundreds of millions of dollars uh, by looking and evaluating this option. Is there a homeopathic treatment for swine flu? Yes. What is it? What's, what's the components of it? 
Well, now we need to talk about how you make immunisation uh, for homeopathics or from homeopathics. There's a number of different options. Because homeopathy works on the law of similars, provided we have something which produces similar symptoms, this will be uh, enable a degree of cover. Now, we actually have the swine, what we call the swine flu nozode. And the Finlay Institute in Cuba, and actually Dr. Petrovsky uh, has written a scholarly paper with the person who is leading that, uh, Dr. Gustavo Braccio, uh, who was in Australia in 2004, 2005, and worked with Dr. Petrovsky, and they, and they actually co-authored a scholarly paper on malarial adjuvants. So the doctor knows who we're talking about, and these are very serious people. They have prepared a swine flu nozode. They could immunise this whole country within a month, and probably at a cost of, of a few million dollars, as opposed to hundreds of millions of dollars. Do you agree, Nikolai? So certainly um, we work uh, with the, the Finlay Institute uh, on, on vaccine development and uh, you know, they are the institute that developed the world's first meningococcal vaccine, uh, so they are extremely serious uh, about vaccines. I, I don't have any knowledge of, of any work by the institute in, in homeopathy. Uh, but uh, as I say, um, w you know, vaccines do have 200 years of history uh, and uh, proof of, of um, the fact that they work. Um, I, I would be sticking to vaccines in, in this well, instance. Can I just interrupt here and say that vaccination first started in 1796, homeopathic immunisation first started in 1798. We also have 200 years of reported and recorded clinical evidence. And the, the really important point that Dr. Petrovsky just made is that these people at Finlay are serious. Now, there's a major scientific paper that's being published soon, and Dr. Bracho and I are actually publishing two papers, one in Australia and one internationally, which will be coming out in the next few months. So the data is there, and I'm very happy to send it to Dr. Petrovsky if you'd like. All right. All right. We are out of time, I'm afraid, yeah. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Good to talk Thank to you.